excited to have a little bit of freedom and create the video content that I want to show you guys, blend my styles, and hopefully change the way that people see my skiing and, and you know, create something that really hasn't been shown before. I was on the U.S. ski team for the last eight years and, you know, so many great moments I've had just over the years traveling with all the teammates and, you know, training and having a good time with the water amps or you and all the homies are on the podium and everyone's just having a good time vibing, flipping, twisting, having a good time. It was, yeah, some of the best times of my life. My name is Todd Ocean. I'm the head aerial coach for the U.S. ski team and I coach Dylan uh, from 2010 to 2014. I was always very proud of Dylan for blending uh, aerials with park and pipe. It was very clear to me very quickly um, that it was very, very good for Dylan. In 2005, I was skiing out of Waterville Valley doing the academy program. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with my skiing career and in 2006 I moved out to Park City, made the U.S. Freestyle Ski Team and sort of everything just started popping off from there. In 2007 I also met up with the 4x9 crew and sort of opened this new chapter of filming and skiing around with the friends and just having a good time. It just sort of made skiing a little bit more fun outside of the, you know, aerial schedule. One minute he's out at some World Cup in some random country trying to qualify for the Olympics and then the next week he'll just be back taking laps at Park City with us, skiing the park and still better than most people at the park even though he'll ski it like three times a year. Dylan had an amazing approach to, to competition day and that really set him apart from the rest of the competitors. People would be uh, stressing out and um, Dylan just kept everything calm and cool and more often than not, competed really well. Yeah, I had some good results in my career. Uh, I won U.S. National Championships three times in a row, which I don't think anyone in the U.S. has ever done. So yeah, to, to be the top dog for three years was just so cool. So when he made the team in 2010, I was very excited for my own selfish reasons because I knew how much it mattered to Dylan to go to the Olympics for aerials, but uh, we all, myself included, wanted him to just kind of put more time into skiing park and powder with us, and so we knew that once he made it to the Olympics, he was going to kill it and do well, and then that chapter of his life would be over and he could now move on to the next thing with us. The hard thing about aerials is it's, you know, on such a set schedule, people only pay attention to the sport for every four years, and that's what everyone in the sport does. You know, everyone wants that Olympic gold medal. When I realized I didn't make that team in 2014, it really uh, sort of gave me a new look on life. I didn't really want to be told when I had to train or when I had to compete. You know, I realized that I want to be on my own schedule. I want to go skiing and do what I want to do. now to see like what he'll be able to do putting that full attention into free skiing like in the park and in the backcountry because 
I mean, we've already seen what he could do in aerials, and it's going to be exciting to see where he takes us.